And the musical chairs continue at McLaren. Matt Morris and Tim Goss, mm -hmm. two engineers of repute in Formula One, both gone. And now Pat Fry joining McLaren. Yes. And we know that at some point James Key is going to be joining McLaren as well. So what do you make of all that? Well, I mean, I, I didn't see either of these moves coming on. Um, James Key, you know, we know he's a fantastic engineer. He's proven that wherever he's worked. He's made the jump to uh, McLaren. And we, you know, we can ponder some of those reasons, maybe why he's done that. Um, but obviously Toro Rosso have said, no, you've got a contract with us. He, mm. you know, he, he extended his contract with them last year. So he can't just leave and go to McLaren. So he's going to have to work out his notice or they have to come to some kind of agreement before he can join. This leaves McLaren in limbo without... As much as they never had a, a, a technical director, it's always been that triumvirate. Yeah, Tim Goss was, was very much a hands-on... Yes, you had three very good you know, hands-on yeah. engineers. Unfortunately, two of those have gone, leaving Pete Prod mm. in the aero department, who's not really um, the ideal person to run the direction of the technical mm. department alone. You know, he's got his work cut out anyway. So they needed someone to drop in, and you know, there is the McLaren stalwart, Pat Fry, who you know, worked at McLaren, he was at Ferrari, he's been working on some consulting at the moment, doing some electric vehicles, I understand, as well. Mm. Uh, you know, previously at Benetton, lots of experience. And it's you know, a good pair of hands to come back to the you know the Woking team and just put some direction in there and just have you know a key person to direct things you know while they're in this transition period. Obviously, if James Key then joins, I don't know if he will then be able to focus on the design side and still let Pat Fry uh, above him do the, the directive side of things. Scarves, where are we at with the listed parts situation in Formula One now? And I say this in the context of James Key and Toro Rosso and how that kind of affects the role of somebody like James? Well, those regulations are already in place. They've been in place for a number of years, and this has allowed Haas to come on board. What it is, is it's called the listed parts regulations, and it lists the parts that a team or a constructor has to manufacture. And that is simply the monocoque, the crash structures, the bodywork, therefore the aero program, you can't buy that in, and oddly the radiators, which are considered part of the bodywork, which is just one of those vagaries of the regulations. Mm. So any team at the moment could go out and speak to another team uh, and buy these parts in, as Haas do from Ferrari, mm -hmm. or you know, anyone else. So Toro Rosso could buy like the hydraulics kit, they could buy the electronics, they could buy the suspension, as well as the engine and the gearbox from uh, their parent company, uh, Red Bull Technology.